بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers so today's lesson we begin a new chapter in the book Usul Thalatha as explained by uh, Sheikh Salil Fawzan, uh, Fawzan Hafizullah so we reach the chapter The chapter entitled Al Asl al Thalith Ma'rifatun Nabiyyina Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, the third principle from the principles of Surah Thalatha, or the, the book, the three fundamental principles. So, the third of those principles, we reached the third principle, and that is to have knowledge of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Shaykh, he, he starts with mentioning here in the title, his name, his uh, lineage, and his upbringing, basically. So this is what we'll discuss, inshallah, and the Shaykh will explain to us. So he says, Al-Asl al-Thalith, ma'rifatu nabiyyikum Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, knowledge of your Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Prophet. <clears throat> So the Shaykh, he says, قَوْلُهُ الْأَصْلُ الثَالِثِ أَيْ مِنُ الْأُصُولُ الثَلَاثَ لِأَنَّ الشَّيْخِ رَحْمَ اللَّهِ ذَكَرَ فِي أَوَّلِ الرِّسَالَةِ أَنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمَ مُسْلِمَةٍ مَعْرِفَةُ هَذِهِ الْأُصُولُ الثَلَاثَةِ وَهِيَ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَعْرِفَةُ دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَعْرِفَةُ نَبِيِّهِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَمَّا الْأَصْلُ الْأَوَّلُ وَالثَّانِي فَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ Sharhuhuma wa bayanu adillatihima. So then the Sheikh says that, well, he says that this is the third principle, i.e., from the the three fundamental principles. Because he, he refers to the original author, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimullah. He says that he mentioned uh, the first, the first uh, treaties, which was the first principle. And that was what's obligatory upon us, or, or every Muslim and every female Muslim, every male and female Muslim to know is, and from what we need to know is this third principle, which is having knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with evidences. So this is what the Sheikh has mentioned here in this first paragraph. He says, as for the uh, the first fundamental. And the second fundamental, which was the first fundamental principle, and the second fundamental principle, well, he says that we've discussed that um, previously. Uh, and the original author, or uh, the Sheikh who's explained the book, has explained that with the evidences as well. Yeah. So it's just a summary of what we've done so far. So then the Sheikh, he continues and he says, Al Asl al Thalith, wa huwa ma'rifatun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لما كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم واسطة بين الله وبين خلقه في تبليغ دينه ورسالته وجب معرفته عليه الصلاة والسلام وإلا كيف تتبع شخصا لا تعرفه فلا فلا بد أن تعرفه من حيث الاسم ومن حيث البلد الذي ولد 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 ونشأ فيه والبلد الذي هاجر إليه وتعر وتعرف مدة عمره عليه الصلاة والسلام. so then the sheikh in this paragraph he says that so he says the third principle and it is to uh, to have knowledge uh, of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. and he mentions here for example when he was uh, the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم himself was when he was alive was or is the person between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah and he, uh, um, and in terms of um, revealing 
the religion and what's upon us. So without the Prophet Sallallahu we wouldn't know. Allah sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to inform the creation, i.e. us, of what is what Allah requires of us. Yeah, that's what the Shaykh is saying here. So therefore, the Shaykh says that it's obligatory upon us. It's an obligation, therefore, upon us to have knowledge about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we don't, then how can you follow? Because if you don't have knowledge of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then how can you follow? He says this, he says, how can you follow somebody you don't know? How can you follow somebody that you do not know? So he says, it's incumbent upon us to know, you know, who he is, his lineage, you know, where he's from, uh, how, uh, you know, his upbringing uh, and the likes of that, uh, that knowledge about him, you know, how long he lived, etc. And more details. So just bring some basics just to get us started. So uh, the Sheikh, he says, وَأَقْسَامُ أُمْرِهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَسَلَامُ وَأَقْسَامُ الْمُدَّةِ الَّتِي أَقَامَهَا فِي هَذِي الدُّنْيَا تَعْرِفُهَا أَيْضًا قَبْلُ النُّبُوَةِ وَبَعْدَهَا وَقَبْلُ الْحِجْرَةِ وَبَعْدَ الْحِجْرَةِ تَعْرِفْ كَيْفَ ابْتَدَعْ بِالْوَحِي عَلَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَسَلَامُ وَمَا تَبْدَدَعْ بِالْوَحِي وَمَا هِيَ الْآيَةِ الَّتِي تَدُلُّ عَلَى نُبُوَتِهِ والآية التي تدل على رسالته تأتي بالآيات التي تدل على نبوته والآيات التي تدل على إرساله فلا بد أن تعرف هذا تعرف نسبه من أي قبيلة لأن العرب قبائل وهو عربي بلا شك فلا بد من معرفة هذه الأشياء عن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بأن تدرس الآيات والأحاديث المتعلقة بهذه المسائل وتنظروا في وتنظروا في سيرة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ودعوته لأجل أن تعرف هذه الأمور عن نبيك الذي أنت مأمور باتباعه والاقتداء به. So then the Sheikh he says here in this paragraph he says so the categories in terms of his his life is split um, into uh, um, he says here, وَأَقْسَامُ الْمُدَّةِ الَّتِي أَقَامْ فِي هَذِي الدُّنْيَا So in terms of uh, what the, about the Prophet Sallallahu his life in this dunya, uh, that you know it, and also uh, you know about his life before him receiving revelation and becoming a prophet, and after that as well. Before the hijrah, before the emigration, and after that as well. And that you know how uh, how uh, the revelation came to him, how it began, uh, and you know that, uh, and also, and when it, when the revelation started, and what are the evidences or the ayat which demonstrate his nubuwa? Yeah, what are those signs? Sorry, the signs that demonstrate his prophethood, and the sign which demonstrates his messengership, etc. And the sh the Sheikh says here, and that there are signs, um, and and the Sheikh will bring ayat as well, evidences as well from the Quran regarding this, uh, about is uh, regarding the Prophet uh, prophethood, and also uh, uh, um, evidences as well regarding the Prophet Sallallahu messengership. And then the Sheikh says that we need to know these. We need we need we need to know. He says you need to know this. You need to know his lineage, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from which tribe he's from, uh, because he says that the Arabs, because the Prophet sallallahu was an Arab as well, that the Arabs have tribes. They are tribes. They're in tribes, and and no doubt he is an Arab, and so it's incumbent uh, for us, uh, from that point of view, to uh, to also so know these things, to have knowledge about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that you know we study or you study uh, uh, the you know the verses and the hadith uh, that um, or the you know the Quranic verses and the ahadith that are connected uh, to these affairs, and that you look into the um, the uh, the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his call, and look into what he, what he did, what his call was. 
in order for you to know or to know these affairs regarding your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Allah commanded us Allah has commanded all of us to follow him and to follow in his footsteps and his, his example so then the Sheikh moves on to the next point and he says he says <clears throat> هَذَا إِسْمُهُ وَنَسَبُهُ إِسْمُهُ مُحَمَّدٌ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَلَهُ أَسْمَاءُ غَيْرِ مُحَمَّدٍ لَكِنْ أَشْهَرُ أَسْمَائِهِ مُحَمَّدٌ قَدْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ فِي إِدَّةِ آيَاتِ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَقَوْلُهُ وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ رسول وقوله ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم وقوله والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وآمنوا بما نزل على محمد وهو الحق من ربهم فذكر فذكر الله اسمه فذكر الله اسمه محمد في عدة آيات. Let's just stop there for a second. So the Sheikh he says, the start of this paragraph. This is his name and his lineage. His name is Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And he has names other than this name that we just mentioned. However, the most famous of his names is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Allah mentioned this in, the, in, in, in his book in several parts of the Quran. So we, we read them in Arabic. So let's um, go to the translation then. Inshallah, bear with me a second. So the first um, evidence here is Surah Al-Fatih, verse 29. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of Allah. Then we move on to the next ayah, Surah Al Imran. Surah Al Imran. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is no more than a messenger and indeed many messengers have passed away before him. The next ayah is from, uh, quoted from Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 40. So let's go there. Give me one second. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of Allah and the last of the prophets. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, the last of the prophets. And Allah is aware, all aware of everything. So that's the whole, the whole ayah. Yeah. And then the final one was from Surah to Muhammad, verse 2. So if you go there, if you go to that part of the Quran, the Mus'haf, then we can read the whole ayah. But those who believe and do righteous good deeds and believe in that which is sent down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa for it is the truth from their Lord, he will expiate from them their sins and will make good their state. Yeah. So the Shaykh says that Allah has mentioned his name as in the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in several ayahs as, 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 as the examples the shaykhs have given us from the Mus'haf, from the Quran. So then the shaykh goes on, goes on to say, he says, وَمِنْ أَسْمَاهِ أَحْمَدْ قَدْ ذَكْرَ اللَّهُ فِي قَوْلِهِ فِي بِشَارَةِ الْمَسِيحِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَي مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرٌ بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ فَهُوَ مُحَمَّدٌ وَأَحْمَدٌ وَمَأْنَى ذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ كَثِيرُ الْمَحَامِدِ عليه الصلاة والسلام وكثير الصفات التي يحمد عليها ومن أسمائه نبي, آآ آآ نبي الرحمة ونبي الملحمة يعني الجهاد في سبيل الله والحاشر ولاقب عليه الصلاة والسلام الذي يحشر الناس بعد بئثته لأنه آخر رسل صلى الله عليه وسلم فليس بعده إلا قيام الساعة ف... فبعد رسالته تقوم الساعة ويحشر الناس للجزاء, للج... للجزاء والحساب و... ومن أراد أن ي... ي... يلم بهذه الأمور فل... فليرجع فليرجع أو فليرجع إلى كتاب جلاء الأفهام في الصلاة والسلام على خير الأنام 
lil Imam Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah. So then the Shaykh says here, um, he says that from his names, from his from the names of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is also Ahmad. And the Shaykh says that Allah mentioned this in his speech uh, with regards to uh, with regards to the good news regarding Al Masih uh, Isa alayhi salam. Right. So in this ayah. If you go to this ayah, Surah Al-Saf, verse 6. Let's read the whole ayah. And remember when Isa, Jesus, son of Maryam, Mary said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming the, the, the Torah, the Torah which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. But when he, Ahmad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to them with clear proofs, they said, this is plain magic. Right? So this is regarding uh, Isa alayhi salam informing of the coming of the of the Prophet, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam, and he said his name is Ahmad. But many of the the Christians uh, deny deny this, and the Jews they, they deny this, and they said it's magic. Uh, make all their excuses. Up. So so this is direct evidence as well. Uh, so then the Shaykh goes on to say, so he says that Muhammad and Ahmad, you know, they have the same meaning, meaning that, uh, you know, somebody who's praised a lot, somebody who's praiseworthy and praised a lot, alayhi salatu wasalam, and that has much, uh, uh, you know, attributes uh, that are, uh, or person who has characteristics that are praiseworthy, pra- praiseworthy characteristics, and from his names is the messenger of uh, mercy and such other names such as uh, the messenger um, of it says here Al-Malhama but the, I'll explain it, the Sheikh says meaning uh, jihad uh, jihad in the path of Allah and also um, uh, other names such as Al-Hashir, Walaqib and, and this is refers to basically that he's the final prophet, he's the final prophet of, uh, of Allah final prophet, messenger of Allah so after this prophet, the only thing that stands be- between us is uh, this dunya and the end of it is the hour, establishment of the hour. And that's why he was given these names, like the final, the ending, the gathering, the one who gathers, the one who is, is bring the ending or the, conclu- the conclusive or conclusion or concluding. Yeah. So basically, because after the prophet, وسلم, that is it. There's no more prophets. And what will come next after dunya will be the hour. The hour will be established. And that's it. Yeah. So this is what the Sheikh is saying here. So the Sheikh says that there isn't after the Prophet وسلم, except establishment of the hour. Yeah? The day of judgment. So after his messengership will the after his messengership the hour will be established, as we all know. And so people will be gathered for they will be recompensed with what they did, good or bad, and they will be accounted for. And, and the Sheikh says, whoever wants to read further into this affair, then he says, uh, look into a book called, uh, I think it's Jila or Jala Al Afam fi Salati wa Salam ala Khair al Anam, the Imam Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah. So that's a book that uh, you can refer to. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an English version, I don't know. Maybe some of the brothers, if they know about the book in English, they can mention it, inshallah, to benefit as well. So then, the Shaykh goes on to say, says, وَأَمَّا نَسَبُهُ فَهُوَ مُحَمَّدْ بِنُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بِنُ عَبْدِ الْمُطَّلِبِ بِنُ عَاشِمْ بِنُ عَبْدِ النَّنَافْ بِنُ قُسَيْ بِنُ كِلَابِ وَهُوَ مِنْ قَبِيلَةِ قُرَيْشِ الَّتِي هِيَ أَشْرَفَ الْقَبَالِ وَقُرَيْشْ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ إِسْمَائِيلَ لَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَالْعَرَبَ عَلَى قِسْمَيْن uh, or his uh, sorry his uh, his yeah his lineage then he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abdi Manaf ibn Qusay ibn Kilab that's his lineage and the Sheikh says and he says that he's and the, and the Prophet sallam he's from the most noblest of the most noblest and respected uh, uh, tribes. And that is Quraysh, the tribe of the Quraysh, yeah, and which is from the 
progeny of Ismail, the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam. And the Sheikh now gives us some benefits about the Arabs. He says the Arabs thereupon two categories that are well known. Yeah, they are well known, they are famous and well known uh, upon two categories. He says, Al Arab al Ariba wa hum al Qahtaniya, wal Arab al Musta'ariba wa hum al Adnaniya. Min Zuriyati Ismail alayhi salam, Ibn Ibrahim al Khalil alayhi salam. Sammu bil Musta'araba li annahum ta'lamu al Arabiya min al Arab al Ariba. Lamma jaat jurhum wa nazalu fi Makkata in the Hajir um uh, Ismail wa uh, Wabnu Ismail. وهو صغير لما وجدوا ما زمزم نزلوا واستلحوا مع هاجر أن ينزلوا عندها وأن أن تسمح لهم أن يستقوا, يستقوا من الماء فإسماعيل عليه السلام كان رديئا في ذلك الوقت ثم إنه تربى ونشأ وأخذ العربية عن جرهم وهي من العرب العربة تزوج من جرهم وجاءه ذرية تعلم العربية ونشوا مع العرب فصاروا عربا مستعربا وهي العدنانية أما العرب فهم فأما العربة فهم القحطانية أصلها من اليمن So the Sheikh gives us some benefits here So he says with regards to Arabs He says there are there's two types العرب العربة and he says they are Known as they are Al Qahtaniya, and he says the other type is Al Arab Al Musta'araba, and he says they are called Al Adnaniya from the uh, progeny of Ismail alayhi salam. So, uh, so the first type Al Arab Al Arab Al Ariba, and they are from Al Qahtaniya. They from their origins are from Yemen. Their origins are from Yemen. They are Arabs. And then you have the uh, and you have Al Arab Al Musta'araba, and they are from Al Adnaniya, i.e., from the progeny of Ismail. Yeah, Ismail alayhi salam. Why? Because the Sheikh explains here, he says they were called Al Musta'ariba because they learned the Arabic language from the let's say original Arabs, uh, Al Arab Al Ariba. From, from the Al Qahtaniya. So it, it mentions here, some history for us mentions when uh, a tribe called Jurhum from, uh, from Yemen, this tribe, they descended uh, around and they lived around Makkah and they descended upon Makkah. Makkah and um, uh, Hajir, uh, the mother of Ismail, um, she. Uh, she was in Mecca. Do you remember when Ibrahim left them? And uh, she was in Mecca. And then the story of the Zamzam. Then the tribe lived there. This tribe lived there. They, they descended upon the area uh, where she was. And they asked and agreed. They agreed obviously upon and they asked that they could, you know, drink water. Uh, the Zamzam. And so from there, uh, uh, Ismail married from that, that tribe. And so they learned Arabic. And this is how... Uh, they, uh, the Arabic came from, from that from that side. So the Sheikh explains this. We learn it from the uh, the Al Qahtaniya, this tribe called Jurhum, who were, were, were uh, originally Ye Yemenis, yeah, from Yemen. And so then the progeny came like that, and that's why they call Adnaniya, and that's why they call Al uh, Al Arab Al Mustariba, because they learned the Arabic language from the Arabs who spoke it, yeah. So then they became Arabs, and 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 uh, and that is Al Adnaniya, yeah, from the Adnaniya, yeah, from so from from the progeny of Ismail. Right. So so that's what the Sheikh has mentioned in that long paragraph there. So let's carry on. So then the Sheikh continues. He says, "Wa ba'dul ulama yaqul al Arab al Ariba ala kismain, Arab ba'ida wa Arab baqiya. Al Arab al ba'ida hum al ladina halaku, wa hum uh, hum al ladina huliku." وهم قوم نوح وعاد وعاد وثمود وشعيب أما العرب الباقية فهم الذين ينقسمون إلى عرب عربة وعرب مستعربة وهي العرب الباقية والنبي من بني هاشم وهاشم من ذرية إسماعيل عليه الصلاة والسلام 
واسمه محمد بن عبد الله بن عبد المطلب وعبد المطلب ليس هذا اسمه 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 شيبة ولكن سمي عبد المطلب لأن لأن عمه المطلب ابن عبد عبد مناف جاء به من المدينة وهو صغير من عند أخواله بني نجار فلما رآه الناس أسود من السفر ظنوا أنه عبد عبد مملوك للمطلب فقالوا عبد المطلب ابن هاشم ابن عبد مناف وعبد مناف له أربعة أولاد هاشم جد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم والمطلب وعبد الشمس والنوفل. So let's just uh, try and translate that uh, paragraph. So then the Sheikh says he says that some of the scholars, uh, you know, they also said that the the Arab al Ariba, they are the Arab al Ariba themselves are upon two categories. They are the Arab Baida and the Arab Baqia. So he says that the Arab al Baida, they're the ones who you know have perished; they no longer exist. And he explains, he, he says that the scholars say that they are from like the people of Noah, Nuh, and the people of Ad, and the people of Thamud, and the people of Shu'aib. They are the ones like who previously perished, they were punished and perished. They no longer exist. As for the Al-Arab Al-Baqiyah, he goes and they are those, um, and they are categorized uh, into the Arab Al-Ariba and the Arab Al-Musta'araba, as explained in the previous paragraph. So the Arab Al-Ariba and the Arab Al-Mustarba, those are the ones who remain, yeah, and, and remain till today, okay, their lineages. And, and he says that these are known, so these, the, the Arab Al-Ariba and the Arab Al-Mustarba, they are known as the Arab Al-Baqiyah, the lasting ones, the ones who are still, still there, yeah. And the, the, then the Sheikh says, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is from Bani Hashim, from Bani Hashim. Well, and, and Hashim are from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam and his name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib well, and he says Abdul Muttalib is that's not his name his actual name is Shayba uh, uh, but he was named Abdul Muttalib because his uh, uncle his uncle uh, from the, his paternal uncle Al Al Muttalib ibn Abd Manaf, he he he, he came uh, from Medina when he was young fr uh, from the sides of his maternal uncles, Bani Najjar. Uh, and so when they saw him, when the people saw him, uh, they saw him like darkened and dusty, you know, disheveled and like black, darkened from this travel. They thought that he was uh, a, a slave. Uh, he was a slave to Al Muttalib. They thought he was a slave of, of uh, Al Muttalib. So they said, uh, Abdul Muttalib, they called him Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abdul Manaf. He, he, he got this nickname. Um, and then the Sheikh says, and Abdul Manaf, they, uh, they have four, uh, uh, and, and Abdul Manaf himself has four children. Hashim, who was a, who was a grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Al Muttalib, and Abdu Shams and Nofal. Yeah. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say, just turn the page. Uh, then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, Banu Hashim yuqa lahum al Hashimiyun. Wa banu al Muttalib yuqa lahum al Muttalibiyun. Wa amma Abdu Shams fa minhum Uthman radiallahu anhu wa minhum Banu. Umayya ha'ula min bani abdi shams. So and we just stop there in this paragraph. So the Sheikh says that Banu Hashim, it said that they are, they are also called al Hashimiyun, And Banu Al-Muttalib, they said to be called also Al-Muttalibiyun. As for Abdu Shams, then from them is Uthman radiallahu anhu. He is from Abdu Shams. From Abdu Shams, yeah, from the lineage. Minhum Uthman radiallahu anhu. And all, so from them is Uthman radiallahu anhu, and from them is Banu Umayya as well. Those, are, those, these, these are from, uh, uh, from Bani Abdi Shams. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, Wa nawful kathalika lahu dhurriyatun minhum, Jubair ibn Mut'im, wa Hakim ibn Hizam. So then also regarding nawful, Right, he says 
the Sheikh says, likewise, uh, likewise from his progeny, there's, as, as we know from Sahaba, Jubair ibn Mut'im and Hakim ibn Hizam. And also, uh, uh, then the Sheikh goes on to say in the next paragraph, says, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, lahu Ismail wa huwa al-akbar, wa huwa jaddu al-arab al-adnaniya, wa ishaq wa huwa jaddu bani Israel, wa jami'u al-anbiya kulluhum min dhuriyati ishaq, illa nabiyyina alayhi salatu wa salam, fa huwa min dhuriyati Ismail, khatim al-nabiyyin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then the Sheikh says, and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, you know, he has, he has Ismail, one of his sons, Ismail, and he's, he's older. And his, uh, and he is the father of the Arabs, the, uh, of the Arabs called Al-Adnaniya. And then there's Ishaq, his other son, who, uh, alayhi salam, who, uh, who is the father of Bani Israel, the Israelites, yeah? And all of the Anbiya, all of the prophets, are from the progeny of Ishaq, except our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is from the progeny of Ismail, and he is the final and the seal of the prophets. No more, no more prophets and messengers after our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So then the Shaykh continues, and he says, "Amma mauliduhu fakad walida am al fil." ولد عام الفيل صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو العام الذي جاء فيه أبرها ملك اليمن انتبه ملك الحبشة ليهدم الكعبة ومعه فيه في لذين فلما وصل إلى مكان يقال له المغمس ولم يبقى إلا أن يدخل مكة ويهدم الكعبة وتفرق أهل أهل مكة وسع وسعد الجبال لأنهم لا طاقة لهم به فأراد أن يتوجه إلى الكعبة فانحبس فانحبس الفيل وأبى أن يقوم من الأرض حبسه الله فإذا وجه إلى غير جهة مكة قام وهر ولا وإذا وجه إلى جهة مكة انهبس ولم يستطع المشي وبينما هم كذلك رأوا فرقان فرق فرقان تير من قبل البحر معها حجارة كل طائر معه حجران حجر في منقاره وحجر في رجليه فرمتهم فصارت الحصاد حصاد تضرب هامة الرجل فتخرج من دبره وتشقه لسفين وأهلكهم الله عز وجل فأنزل الله في ذلك يذكر قريشا سورة الفيل ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل من جهن من جهنم والعياذ بالله فجعلهم كأسف معكوف. so then the sheikh he says in this long paragraph he says as as in regards to uh, then his birth uh, regards to the uh, the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then you know he was born in the year of the elephant amul fil the year of the elephant and it was the year that uh, the uh, uh, the king a king called Abraha uh, who was the king of Yemen? He sent, uh, he sent uh, the king of Al Habasha, right? And they came with an army, as you know the story. Came with an army. They went. They wanted to destroy the Kaaba, and they had this giant elephant with them. So when they arrived to a place which is called al magmas and it's very very close to the uh, to mecca it's a place very close to mecca uh and they obviously wanted to destroy the the kaaba uh, uh, uh and then they you know wanted to try to destroy the kaaba and to disperse the people you know and cause chaos 
and those people obviously they try to take high positions because they couldn't do they didn't have no power to d- deal with them because they were a massive army plus the big elephant that they had so so when this elephant they wanted it, they wanted it to go towards the car but to destroy it and it stopped so every time it faced and went into the direction of the Kaaba it would stop it just would stop it get like blocked it just couldn't move yeah and 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 it wouldn't want to move it just stopped and when they when they faced any other direction than the direction of the Kaaba it would start running it start moving fast and start you know it start moving so the sheikh mentions this here so you know they, they weren't able to do what they accomplished you know Allah protected the Kaaba he protected the Kaaba his house uh, uh Bayt al-Haram and so the sheikh says that Allah sent as as we know about the, the surah we just read surah al-fil that we know that Allah sent these birds in their beaks stones and and and, and obviously carrying with their feet as well the, between their legs stones stones from the hellfire there were stones from the hellfire burning stones from the hellfire and they were pelted they all they were pelted with these stones these armies they were they were pelted with these stones and it hit their head it'll go through them and come out the backside and it split them in two two halves and they would look like you know like uh, when an animal uh, defecates and there's a hay kind of hay left behind uh, that's what they that was their remains it was like that like dried hay yeah and 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 that was the their ending and then uh, the sheikh uh, mentions uh, he quotes the uh, the ayahs from surah al-fil so if we go there towards the end of the quran we'll read the translation inshallah for our own benefit have you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam not seen how your lord dealt with the owners of the elephant the elephant army which came from yemen under the command of abraha al ashram intending to destroy the kaaba at makkah did he not make their plot go astray and sent against them birds in flocks striking them with stones of sijil and made them like an empty field of stalks of which the corn has been eaten up by the cattle yeah so uh when the, yeah so you got the description there alhamdulillah um like hay or in this situation like corn you know just leftovers nothing to be seen really so uh the sheikh continues he says hadhihi qissatu al fil hamallahu baytahu al haram wa halaka hadha al jabbar wa fi hadha al am walida muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa zahara ma wiladatihi ayat haythu zahara ma hu nur ushriqat lahu qusur sham wa fi laylati wiladatihi irtajat al asnam وارتج ايوان كسرى وسقطت منه شرفات في ليله ولاده النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هذه ارهاصات لبئثه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والجن وشياطين حصل عندهم ضجه في الليله العظيمه so then the sheikh basically says this paragraph that this story about the elephant this elephant and sabi then the sheikh says that allah protected his house the kaaba and he destroyed this you know this arrogant you know the abraha this arrogant leader and in the same year and in this same year the year of the elephant our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born and what was apparent from and and from and what was what was apparent from his birth as well uh were signs from where for example the shaykh gives some examples like the lights like uh, the 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 castles of sham were lit up in the night of his uh birth and gives some other examples about about kisra the uh rule of the persians where you know there were shock there were signs uh that occurred and you know in the night of when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born 
And then the Shaykh also says that the jinn and the shayateen, you know, the, you know, what was obtained from them was, you know, dijja, discomfort, I believe to say, uh, in, uh, discomfort and uns being unsettled in, in this night, this great night. So these are some of the signs that the Shaykh mentions. And then he goes on to say here, he says, Walida fi makan yuqalahu, uh, shu'ub ala, مُقَرَّبَةِ مِنَ الْكَعْبَةِ وُلِدَ فِي مَكَّةَ فِي مَكَّةَ لَكِنْ لَا يُوجَدْ تَحْدِيدْ ثَابِتْ لِمَوْضِعِ الدَّارِ So then uh, the Sheikh says here that he was, he was born in a place which is called شُعْبَ لَا مُقَرَّبَةِ مِنَ الْكَعْبَةِ and close to the Kaaba uh, and he was born in Mecca however the Sheikh says here that there isn't anything specified uh, concrete uh, um, or uh, confirmed with regards to uh, exactly uh, which place or as in which house or yeah which house I'd say which exact place or house where we put الدار. so then the sheikh um, says here فَهُوَ وُلِدَ فِي مَكَّةَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَإِسْتَرْضَعَ فِي بَنِي سَعَدْ إِنْدَ حليمة السعدية ومات عبد الله ومات عبد الله أبوه وهو في بطن أمه ثم ماتت أم ماتت أمه بعد ولادته بقليل ف فهذنته أم أيمن الحبشية التي ورثها عن أبيه وصار في كفالة جده عبد المطلب ثم مات ثم مات عبد المطلب وانتقلت كفالت وانتقلت كفالته الى عمه ابي طالب وعاش صلى الله عليه وسلم 40 سنه قبل النبوه معروفا بالامانه والصدق والكرم وتجنب اباده الاسنان وتجنب شرب الخمر ما كان يعمل ما يعمله اهل الجاهليه بل كان عليه الصلاه والسلام يخرج إلى غار حرة ويتعبد فيه الأيام ذات العدد يعبد الله على ملة إبراهيم على التوحيد ثم لما بلغ الأربعين من عمره عليه الصلاة والسلام نزل عليه الوحي نزل عليه الوحي أو نزل عليه الوحي بأن جاءه جبريل وهو في غار حرة وقال له اقرأ قال ما أنا بقارئ أي لا أحسن القراءة فضم فضمه ذمة شديدة ثم أرسله وقال اقرأ قال ما أنا بقارئ ثم ذمه مرة ثانية ثم أرسله وقال له اقرأ قال ما أنا بقارئ فقال له اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق سدن الشيخ uh, he says in this paragraph so he, he was born in Mecca صلى الله عليه وسلم and um, uh, when he was a baby, he, he was uh, um, with uh, Bani Sa'ad, with Halima as Sa'diya. And, um, he, uh, and when uh, Abdullah, his father died, his father died, Abdullah, who's his father, died, and he, when Abdullah, his father, died, he was. He was still, you know, in his, in his mom's womb, in his mother's womb, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then she died. Then his mother died uh, a short time after his birth. So, um, uh, Um Ayman al Habashiya, she took care of him, and uh, and then he then he was in the company of his grandfather Ab Abdul Muttalib. Then when he passed away, then he he was then he was in the company of or under the care of um, uh, his uncle, his uh, pater his uh, paternal uncle, Abi Talib, and he so he sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived forty years. He lived for forty years before receiving his prophethood, and he was known in that period before his prophethood. He is well known of for being trustworthy, honest, noble, generous, um, 
and staying and staying away and avoiding uh worshiping uh idols and he was known for staying uh, staying away and avoiding uh, drinking alcohol he didn't do the actions of the people of ignorance rather he uh alayhi salatu was salam he would uh, leave the leave the company of these people and he would go to uh, uh, the cave in Hira the Mount Hira in the cave there he would go there and uh, he would spend days there certain periods of time there uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam upon Tawheed so when he reached the age of 40 uh, alayhi salatu wa salam Jib, uh, then Jibreel came with the revelation Descended upon him with the revelation And he was in the cave in Hira And he, and he said to him Read And he said I, I can't read I, The sheikh says I, you know, I, I can't read well I, I can't read So then he squeezed him Severely Jibreel alayhi salam squeezed him Severely And said And then he was sent again to him And he said Another time he said to him Read And he said I can't read so the, and then he squeezed him severely again and then he came the third time and said read and he said but I, I can't read so then Jibreel said to him read and he said to him uh, then the Prophet said to him I can't read and then he said and then Jibreel said the following he said Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq so he read the first two ayahs from Surah Al-Alaq so if we go there uh, Surah Al-Alaq if we read that he said read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists has created man from a clot, a piece of thick coagulated blood. So he said, he said those uh, ayahs and uh, uh, to him, and revealed that to him as revelation. The first two ayahs are revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So on the last paragraph, brothers, we're almost there. Lad. So uh, just two minutes, inshallah, we'll be finished. Bear with me. Hadihi hiya nubuwatihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hadihi hiya nubuwatuhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. نبأه الله بقرة أي جعله نبيا بذلك ثم ذهب إلى بيته إلى بيته يرتجف من الخوف لأنه لقي لقي شيئا ما كان يعرفه من قبل أمرا هائلا فوجد زوجه زوجه خديجة رضي الله عنها فغتته وهدأته وقال له كلا والله لا يخز لا يخزيك الله إنك لا تسل الرحم وتقر الضيف وتحمل كل والتعي وتعين على نوائب الدعاء فوتأته وذهب فوتأته وذهب ذهبت به إلى عمها ورقة ابن نوفل وكان قد تهنث وقرأ في الكتب السابقة السابقة تعبدا لله عز وجل فلما أخبره بما رأى قال هذا هو الناموس الذي كان كان ينزل على موسى يعني جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام. So um, so this is the last paragraph. So the Sheikh says here in the final paragraph for this chapter. He says that this is is the message of the uh, is the messengership or the prophethood of of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah informed him with saying, "Read." I.e., he made him a prophet by that by saying, "Read," and then, as we know from the surah that we just uh, we read the first two ayahs of. Then, when this happened. The Prophet Sallallahu he went to he went home, and he was, uh, you know, discomfort and shocked and because of what happened and what he saw, and and he was fearful because he he met a thing that he didn't know from before. It was he was surprised, shocked, and a, a, a shocking affair, you know, that would surprise and startle anybody, right? So then he he found he found his uh, his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. So she covered him and she tried to calm him down and you know just to comfort him and soothe him. And she said to him, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, never, you know, Allah, you know, would not, you know, would humiliate you. You know, you're a person, you know, you're a well-known person. You know, we all know the, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, characteristics of the Prophet before his Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You know, he would, uh, you know, uh, keep the family ties. You know, he would uh, be generous and, you know, fulfill the rights of, of, of guests and, you know, etc. All those things that the Prophet sallallahu used to do and that we know of. And so she, uh, his wife, she calmed him and she, you know, she covered him and she consoled him. And then she, uh, uh, so then she went, she went to her uncle. She went to her paternal uncle, Waraka, Warakatu ibn Nawfal. And he was aware of these, uh, 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 of this, and he knows, uh, learned with regards to the Torah, etc. And the books from before. And he, when she informed him, he said, he replied and he said that this is a namus referring to uh, Jibril alayhi salam. And he said that this is a namus Jibril alayhi salam who used to descend upon Musa alayhi salam. Right? So he knew. Yeah. And he informed. And so, you know, this is proof as well. Yeah. Clear proof. And there's many, many proofs. But uh, the Sheikh stops there for this chapter. So we will stop there. And the next chapter next week will be uh, regarding the uh, revelation. How it descended upon the Prophet Sallam. And the Sheikh will go into more detail. And we will, we'll, inshallah, translate uh, that as well. Inshallah. So uh, we'll conclude today. Uh, went over slightly over time uh, as planned. But inshallah, we will continue same time next week. Or it may be a little bit earlier. Uh, but I will let you know, inshallah, beforehand. بارك الله فيك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته